Hey, what's up, guys? It's the Film Geek here, and it's time for this week's stack. First up, I watched the entire series of Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. The show started off extremely strong um, with a great storyline and very cool acting. Uh, but then season two happened, and things kind of went downhill from there. Um, the story in season two got very convoluted and and really really out there um, with adding in all kinds of all kinds of characters that have come back from the future and it just got really convoluted really quickly um, although some of the cool some of the flashbacks um, of people in the future were pretty cool um, but all in all I give the series as a whole a three and a half out of five still a very solid TV show worth checking out Next up, I watched the 1946 Best Picture winner, the best, excuse me, the best years of our lives, and uh, this movie bored the fuck out of me. Um, it's it follows three uh, war vets that are coming home, um, finally being done with the military, and trying to adjust uh, to life. Um, one of these people is a total booze hound. Um, one of these people is having, uh, you know, flashbacks of the war and the, the bad parts that happened, and one of them had their hands blown off, um, and now has two hooks in place. Um, it was a movie that could have been done interestingly, but wasn't. It just lagged on and on and on for two hours and 48 minutes that I will never get back. I give The Best Years of Our Lives a 1 out of 5. Next up I saw The Secret Garden. I seem to remember liking this movie a lot when I was a kid, didn't really understand why. Now that I've seen it again, I still like it, just not as much. The acting is nowhere near as strong as I remember it being, and neither was the story, but it was still a very good movie, very good um, editing, uh, great cinematography, um, and all in all, it was just good. I give it a 3 out of 5. And then I saw 40 Days and 40 Nights, uh, the comedy with uh, Josh Hartnett, and this movie was really, really funny. I laughed a lot. Um, it had some good touching parts to it, not a lot, but a few, um, but all in all, it was just a very good time, uh, mostly because of the hilarity throughout the film. I give it a three and a half out of five for some very strong comedy. Um, then I saw Toy Story 3, um, and this is one of the better movies that, uh, I've seen, um, in the last couple weeks, I think. Uh, it was very, very strong. I don't think it was a perfect film like a lot of people I know say it is but it had me laughing out loud a lot uh, it had me crying at the end it had me feeling for the characters and when you feel for animated toys that's that's a pretty good uh, that's pretty good storytelling um, so I give Toy Story 3 a 4 out of 5 next up I saw The Men Who Stare at Goats uh, this movie was really interesting and w really well acted. Um, I don't really know what I was expecting from this movie. Uh, I, I think I wanted it to be funnier than it was, but it was still pretty funny and very dramatic and intense, and I liked it a lot. I was really interested um, in what was what was going to be the big thing to happen uh, in this movie, and it had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. So I give uh, The Men Who Stare at Goats a 3 out of 5. And finally, I saw the movie. I saw an ind a no-budget independent film called Film Geek. So of course, with a name like Film Geek, the Film Geek here has to review it. Um, the the cinematography was god awful. Uh, this was shot with a very cheap standard definition video camera. Um, the acting was god awful. Um, however, the story was interesting, and the characters were really cool. Um, although it did touch a little closer to home than I would like, because uh, the main character um, is a total, total spaz um, who can think, who basically lives movies and can think of nothing else to talk about, and is extremely awkward. 
and I feel like he is as awkward in the movie as I fear that I might be in real life. Uh, I have huge social anxieties um, around people, and so I try to avoid any social situations whatsoever. And the way that this guy acts in this movie is exactly why I avoid those situations, because I fear that I'll be like that too. Um, so for me, it was definitely a really close-to-home movie, um, but it was extremely flawed. Um, it was just terrible. Like, it was a just terrible look at it, and the acting was god awful. And you could tell that no money at all went into this movie. Um, I give it a two and a half out of five for keeping me interested in, in seeing how events were going to turn out and feeling so close to the movie. But it, it was not that great. It was pretty middle of the road for two and a half out of five. Um, so that's this week's stack, and I will see you guys next week. Everyone, have a wonderful Christmas. Hope you get everything you want on your list. Un unless that thing is, you know, for me to not get any more subscribers, which I need subscribers. So if you're seeing this, check subscribe, please.